you are doing fine. So in today's tutorial, we will be looking into how we can create a custom widget from scratch. Okay. So before getting started, we will understand what the widget is. So basically, every component of the service portal, you can call it as a widget. So you can call it like service portal is a collection of widgets. Okay. So as you can see on the service now definition, widgets are what define the content on the portal. So whatever is there on the portal, you can call it as widget. Okay. You can use the base system widget provided with service portal, clone and modify widget. Okay. But we will be developing from scratch. So today we will be looking on one example where we will be creating a widget to update the user information. Which user? Logged in user information. Okay. So let's get started without wasting time. So basically we will go to service portal and in service portal you can go to widgets. So here you can see out of the box there are a couple of widgets which are already present but we will be creating a new one for so we we'll click on new and we will give the name as update user okay I'll give the same name to ID also done and then we will simply save it out so once we save it out what we will be doing, why I saved it out without updating anything, we will be opening the same thing in open in widget editor. Okay, So it will take some time, it will open into a widget editor and we will be doing the further coding over there only. So basically what we want to do, for logged in user, the information will pull on a widget and a user can update that information. For example, if I am a logged in user. I can see my information like name, mobile number and so on on the widget and then I have a provision that I can update it out also. Perfect. So let's go over here and I will just, you can hide and show the template from here. Okay, like HTML, client group, server site, CSS and all the things out. Okay. And once you save, you can, I will enable the preview also. Okay. So you will be able to see the preview also once you save it out. So if I save this out. And if I click on this eye icon, so a preview window will open and as you can see there is nothing currently. Okay. So let's close it up. I don't need a HTML for now, I don't need a client screen. So we'll be working on server side first. So we'll be we'll be creating a function, just a simple function, just to pull the information from the data table. So what I will be doing? Data dot user info. dot user info equal to I will define an array okay and then we'll be pushing out the things into this array only so this is done so I will do variable var gr gr tab oh it doesn't work over here okay gr equal to new client record client record on which table we will go to this and let's go use the table then we have to add the query so i will do gr dot add query in query what we want to give um, this id this id is equal to what will be this is we want the current username right so gs dot get user What is that function get? Use the oh, U is capital. Use the ID. Okay. So we got the query. Then we will be doing gr dot dot query. Then while gr dot next. Ideally, it will return only one record because we'll go. We are doing with the society, and society is generic. Okay, not generic. Sorry, it's uh, colis for user. 
nothing to it. Now we will be pushing the data into the array. So how we can do that? Data dot user info dot push. Push is like we are pushing the data into the database. And we will be pushing a JSON object inside the database. So how you can define that? So we have defined the JSON object. And the JSON object will be like first name. What will the name? Name will be gr dot name dot to string because I want it in a string format. In the similar way, we'll be adding few more things. It should be gr, not gs. Gr. So we'll be having name, mobile number, email, and what? ID. Let's let's have this whole thing for now. Okay. And we'll add a semicolon over here. So here, first name is done. Then I will add phone. And I can give mobile. Mobile is. Mobile underscore phone, I guess. This is the backend value for the mobile. X dot to string. So the mobile is done. And what is email we have to do? I will give it a name as email. And I will give email dot to string and the last one I want to go with ID and for ID I made a mistake it should be comma not semicolon my bad and here there is four attributes or nothing ID for ID it will be like sys ID perfect so this is done and now what we'll be doing is like just for the confirmation purpose whether we are getting proper information or not so we will be doing gs dot add info message and there I can do data dot user info dot of zero because I, I, I know there will be only one object dot to string just to see okay, if it works and I will add semicolon and we will save it out so once it's saved we will try to see if we are getting the required input information or not Is getting saved, I guess. I try to do the view. I think it's still getting saved. Mm -hmm. So now it started loading. Okay, now it got saved and we got object 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 so we are getting something let's try to get something out for example if I go with name let's see what's coming in name system administrator so it's working we can expect it's working okay so we don't need this out now now this is done okay so we have added a service side code now we'll be we the next action what we have to do is like we have to showcase it out on the user form so first of all we'll be creating a HTML template so this is a HTML template I will just remove the server side script for now okay 
and in HTML template, what we'll be doing? Dev. Class. I'll be adding two class over here. So class and in class I will give one class uh, let's give one class only which is panel as panel default and in this we will be closing the div the first div is closed. Now in this div we will be adding one more div. Okay. So that div will be like div will be adding what class equal to to form dot group And now in this particular div, we will start creating our field. Okay. So the first field will be just add one more class. this particular class we will give panel ash body and we will provide two CSS we will just define it out for now and then we will go with the definition for the same in some time one will be border the second one will be back background okay just to make it more beautiful okay we'll be doing that so in the form group level we will be adding our first field which will be like label label is added so oh, it's added giving our default so I will give name and name and we will give it an input value as input as equal to form dash control and we'll make it read only for now just
Okay, so we have created one field with the div. In the similar way, we will create few more. Let's create three. So one is this, the second one, the third one. And here, the second one will be mobile. And the third one, I don't want to read only for mobile. And the third one will be email. And we'll remove the read only from here also. Okay. And if I save this out now, let's see how exactly it looks. So name. Okay, I think. Save. I missed that particular angle brace. That's the reason. So I'll show you like that. So we have name, mobile number, email. Mob name is read only, and others are editable. Okay. And the last thing we want to add is a tape button. So we will simply get this tape again. I'll copy, paste, and for button, as you must be knowing. So what we'll be doing? is give it class equal to form okay input type equal to will give submit class we will change so first of all i will give type equal to submit and value value i will give to update what else class also i will give it's not form control it's button button and i will give it a primary for now perfect so if i save this out we should be able to see the button also Label. now we have created a form now the next step as a part of this what we have to do is like we have to pull the information whichever we have pulled in the server set script over here and bind it to this field okay so how we can do that it's pretty simple so what we have to do we'll be using the ng directives okay it will be using angular directives to get the things done so for that what we have to do is simple before that let's let's fix the css also okay we have already defined this css body right so let's make it more beautiful so i will do dot border the first class and we'll be adding it a border which I will be to border colon of three pixel and I will give solid a red color okay and the second thing what we have to draw background uh, let's give it a background as what background dot color colon mm. red blue Let's see if it works. So I have saved it out. We'll go for preview again. Hmm. 
Nothing got set. Okay, the border got set. Now the color, I think for color I have to give color code. So let's give let's give a color hash f f f f f zero. So we are giving color for the background right now. So we got the border and now we are waiting for the color. And then we will be binding the server side code to this HTML body. How we will be doing that? I will showcase that also. If this get over. Uh, it's taking, I don't know why it's taking so much of time. Error. What happened? There is a mistake over here. That is the reason. Background color. If I save this right now. Okay, let it be. I'll remove this. I think white also looks good on me. So we will remove this out and we will look into the CSS at the latter point. Come on. And now we can see the form like this. Now let's quickly bind the data. So I will close this out. I will close the CSS also out. Okay, and I will open the server side thing because we want to pull this data and show it over here. So what you have to do for this will be using an ng repeat function. Okay, so what will be doing over here? This background I will do ng. This is a directive on Angular. Okay, it will iterate through all the array and showcase the data. Say so ng dot repeat. And there we can give n in what n in data dot user info. So it will iterate through this array. Okay. And now what we have to do, we have to bind this information to our feed. So for example, name. So we will be doing ng dash model equal to n dot name and dot name in the similar way we'll be doing it for mobile and it will be in front instead of name it will be mobile And for year, it will be email. I will save this out. Let's see. So it got saved. And if I do the preview, so you can see system administrator. But why we are not able to see the mobile number and this? Oh, sorry, I I gave my actual mobile number. 
because this particular information will not be there on the user on the user table let's try to find it out so if i go and type this says underscore user dot list and if you this is a username right and if i search with the name user system administrator if i open with that so we have to give the email address email only Like no more one two three at the rate gmail dot com and where is the mobile number nine six 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 I'm giving this some random Let's see if I gave the right field name. mobile underscore phone okay okay perfect so i'll go back save still didn't load just a second jha dot mobile underscore phone i think it's already string for that Mobile M O B I L E. Oh, I I added it to a wrong place. Sorry for that. So it's ng mobile group. It should be over here. Control X. V. Let's close this out. Mobile is there now. my bad so if i save this out route right now so it got saved and if i preview it out so here i can see the information currently now what we did we pulled the information for the logged in user in the server side script then we defined the html template on HTML side, we gave the CSS okay to the widget. Now the next step is like currently, if you click on this update, nothing will happen. Okay, reason being there is no action defined for that, right? So we'll be defining the action for the same now, so that it will return the information back to the server side thing, right? So for that, what we have to do is like first of all. we will define a button action a class button and we will do ng dash click 
what should happen on this so if we will give a function a method called c dot date user and we will pass the n which is the current object for this particular uh, action we will be passing this object over there okay now uh, once we get this information right we have to pass this information from html to client side so how the exactly flow works from from server side it goes to client side from client side it goes to html and in the similar way it goes from html to client side from client side it goes to server side so we have to define this function on the client side so let's define the function on the client side we will close this out for now and we will give c dot this then we will do c dot update a user c dot update user equal to function which will take in argument as n right and it will take an argument as n and i think i remove one function out one curly brace out okay and now we will be defining this function out so what we will be doing is c dot data dot phone or we can say mobile dot phone mobile dot underscore phone equal to n dot mobile in the similar way we have to do it for other two fields also so mobile as username is read only i will not go for that i will have only two things only mobile and email id so we will go with email over here and it will be end dot email from where i am getting the reference from here i am getting the reference okay and then from here once the object is set will be passing it to the server side how to pass it like c dot server dot update dot update dot then and in this we have to define a function which has c dot data data equal to empty object we are returning the empty object at the end so this is done over here we have passed the information of mobile number from html we have passed it to client script now from client script we will be passing it the information to the server side so that it get updated on the on the database so we will go with the server side i'll just remove the html and here we have defined the function till now this is coming as an input to or to what we can say server side so what we can do if input then only we will be processing the thing if input then what we have to do gs dot add info message i am just verifying it out mobile equal 
equal to and I can give colon and it will be input dot mobile underscore phone underscore phone and what was the next it will be like plus right plus email colon plus in input dot email I'm just verifying the data out okay whether the data is coming correctly or not so let's save this out and now if I click on the button over there it should pass this information from HTML to client side and from client side to server side to get this info message input mm -hmm. what I've defined on the client side mobile Underscore phone, right? And email. Yes. Just copy it once, and I will paste it out. So this is mobile and phone, and the next one is. and if I click on this update button so you can see mobile number is this and email ID is this so the information is correct coming correctly now let's move forward if information is there then what we'll be doing variable update gr equal to new night record on which table it will be this underscore user table we'll be doing gr dot get get in this gs dot dot get user id and and then we'll be doing if gr it should be not gr it should be updated here let me add some spaces so that you can see the code if update gr dot next how we can give if update gr then we have to do the gr dot mobile record phone equal to 
input current moment and discrete form and in the similar way we have the email id also so this is for updating the email id and phone number if you have yes, understood this till now so it's email and here also email and then simply gr dot gr update gr dot done so if i save this out and let's see if it works end to end now it saved i will preview the tip preview it out Hmm. Come on, come on. Save. I still can't do it again. it's loading so where here we can see this is the mobile number and email id it's my email id if i want to change it my personal email id if i do a m i c u j r f t h i gmail.com and if i update so ideally it should update it to the database so now it got updated and if we do the same again so let's see if we see the updated information oh we can check it over here also till that time if it has updated the information correctly I think my internet is pretty slow today. Okay, and now if I the previous loading, and now you can see the email ID got updated. Okay, if I go to the screen, here also you can see the email ID got updated. If I again update it out, if I do I'm a Gujarati one two three from here, and if I update, so I did it should update. So it got updated over here, and if I go, you can see it got updated to one two three. So in this way, you can create a custom widget, and now this widget is full fledged developed. Now you can use this widget wherever it's necessary in the portal. Okay, and you can create your own use case, your own widget. Okay, and use it in the portal. So this is all for today's tutorial. In today's tutorial, we have understood how we can create a basic widget from the scratch, from scratch to the end. Okay, hope you like this video. Stay. Please like, follow, subscribe to my channel. Please stay. and please drop comment uh in the comment box okay so that we can get some ideas to create videos in the future till then stay safe stay happy and have a nice day thank you